Okay, welcome to the tutorial on how to use OpenOffice Draw. This particular tutorial is going to focus on how to make a poster. And it is designed to support anybody who's never used OpenOffice before. So, uh, here we go. Uh, first thing we're going to do is open up OpenOffice. Now, this has been downloaded. It's a free program. That's a great thing, as probably most of you know. But if you don't, this is a great way to get started on making posters, making anything to do with graphics. The first thing we do is open up the program, click on it, and you'll notice that there are a number of other programs within the OpenOffice suite, they call it. It's very much like other things like, Open, like Microsoft. So the first thing you do is choose the drawing program, and it's a program all of its own, right? So click on there, and the first thing you'll notice is there is a window there to get started with. Now let's take an overview of what we got started. So we're, we're trying to make a poster. Um, the first thing I notice is we've got a, an open slate to start with. You'll notice that there are some units at the top. A lot of people get bogged down with these programs around some really basic things. And that's what we're going to try and help you to avoid by knowing some of these things, some of these things, how the settings work, it'll help you a lot with getting started and feeling more comfortable with the program. It takes a while, it takes a few minutes to get to know some of these settings, but I think it's really worthwhile. So, first thing you'll notice is, let's set this, the parameters, let's set up your page to get started. So most posters, I guess, you know, people will say that they're, they would like to have it bigger, but they're usually 8.5 by 11 just because that's what they have available and they're going to print something out. So you'll notice uh, on this particular window we have uh, the the screen is divided up with units. So across the top you've got your 8.5 uh, and, and on the other side you've got your 11. Now just be aware that there is a possibility that your window may not, may not have opened up that way. And if that's the case that's because your units either are set to not even show, or uh, they, they, it may just be that it's set up for centimeters or some other unit of measurement. Whenever I talk to people about these kinds of programs, I really like to identify wherever you can right click because it really makes things quicker. So if you move your mouse up, to, so now that we're exploring the, the units of our page and has it set out, just right, right click right on the ruler at the top and you'll notice that you have options there and OpenOffice is great because if you want your page to be set up in something else, let's say you want it to be set up in centimeters, you can click on that and all of a sudden your page is immediately changed to centimeters. If you want to change it back to inches, simply click right click on it and click inches. The units um, are easy to set within OpenOffice. There are two ways. You, one, as we mentioned, you can right-click on the actual rulers. If you don't happen to have a right-click mouse, uh, there is another uh, option for setting these things. So, let's get to the idea of setting up the, the page using <clears throat> the, the menu at the top. So you go across to Tools, and you click on Tools, and you go down to and across the top you've got all these navigation um, buttons one of them is tools so you go to options so you've got within options within tools there are many there are at least eight or ten different settings but the important ones the important one here is options so you click options you go to open office and you look at always remember you you got to really focus when you're using OpenOffice that you're using draw all the time. You're not, we're not going to be using the writer program or anything to do with that. So generally uh, go to the uh, general settings but the important one here is grid. Now the reason that the grid uh, option is so important is because when you move your mouse you want a nice flowing feel and what I found for a while there when I was using it, and this really slows a lot of people down, is they get really frustrated because you, you don't have the sensitivity that you really want. Now, draw will give you the sensitivity, but you've got to set it. In other words, you don't want the mouse jumping around. You don't want your objects click, you know, jumping from set point to point as you're moving them. So 
Um, the way you can do that is there are two settings. All the snap settings, I set them down to their lowest point, okay, down to one pixel. And all the resolution settings, I set them down to zero. So you just go in and you set them all to zero and the lowest settings and that's basically it. Once you do that you're gonna find that the objects flow into place very nicely and I would turn off the snap to grid as well. Okay? So you've got grid, resolution, and snap. The grid I would I would turn all of those off um, and I would make sure that the uh, horizontal and vertical resolution is set down to its lowest point. Now when you you'll notice that as you open and close an object it's a really nice smooth flow if you don't you're going to find that the the drawing starts to click from place to place it's very annoying so make sure you have that setting it's a very important one there are some you have to get acquainted with the interface in other words what you see in front of you on the screen now to start with we've got a series of navigation uh, buttons at the top file edit view insert format tools modify window and help so let's get started with file each one of these has bearing on your project no matter how simple it is you still have to have find your way around those particular buttons now with file the important ones uh, as you open it are you won't have to worry about wizards it doesn't really have much to do with draw um, you don't have to worry about you will have to worry about recent documents because very quickly you will have especially with draw you'll be saving your projects as you go and it's a nice quick way to open up uh, the last project you worked off. So I use recent documents all the time um, you'll also need to use save as and close. If you're not familiar with computing too much, the save as is extremely important. Uh, basically that allows you to give the name to your project. So for example, why don't we just cause it, call this one um, T1 for test 1 and we'll just choose where we want to put it on our desktop and we just save it as T1. So from now on if you look at the top here it's always going to be called T1. The next thing we need to do in the file button um, is go down until we see um, the save. So even though we're, we're um, we'll just put an object in here quickly, save it all the time. Instead of hitting save, there are a number of ways of saving. We will save as when we want to change the name. But yeah, and there's a lot of times, especially when you're doing drawings, okay? These are concepts that are they come back over and over again. So let's say you want a particular part of your uh, drawing to add to a drawing later on. So you let's say you just wanted this particular rectangle in its own file. So you just call it T1. But if you also want to build as you go and you add a circle and you add another circle and now it becomes something completely different. So let's say you want to change the name of your thing. Well, then you sit, you're trying, you save it as something else. So we're going to call it, say, T2. And now we've got two uh, projects going, T1 and T2, which is really nice because if I want to keep things simple, I can always open recent documents. I can always open T1 in the desktop and it's different than T2. It's got nothing in it. T1, open, T1, and T2 has completely different information. Okay? And that's an important concept. So keep carrying on with file. The ones that I use a lot of, export. So let's say, and this, this is where it starts getting um, powerful very quickly. Let's say we, we want these objects that we've made, the, the rectangle and the two rounds or oval shapes. We simply select them all at once, right click and drag the uh, selection tool over them. So here's your selection tool down here. 
you right click on it on these objects all together and you go file export and you can export just those particular objects okay we'll get back to a lot of these ideas but in order for you to have much control over your project it's nice to know about these particular little things exporting what's being dealt with there are is the idea of saving pieces of your <clears throat> project as you go and so you can save e give each one a name it's just going to be the object you have, have there and you can export and bring it into your project as you go so these are really important again important parts of the puzzle you can also export either just the object or the entire project as a PDF PDF is is a program uh, or, or is a format for saving information to make it basically it's saving the information so it's going to stay really solid in terms of its format for printing or for sending to someone else online so again that ability to save as or export is also really important the final point I just want to make is the importance of folders so everything every time you save something and it's so important to keep your your work organized because this is how so many people get frustrated and they end up not doing much work in these programs is because they just get uh, they just lose their their material as they go so always uh, you know when you're saving your project make sure you know where it's going I almost always use my desktop and then I can transfer it to somewhere else and in the next video we'll talk about uh, saving and the importance of where you save parts or imp entire projects as you go uh, and as with all computing it's so important because there's nothing more frustrating or annoying than not being able to find out where your work is so we'll get into that next time but again it's very simple just make sure as you save it you save it into a folder call it the same thing so if you're making a poster about your band or your club give it the name of your club give the folder your name of your club and then start saving all of your objects and and parts of your project into that folder as you go on your desktop and then you always know where everything is so i hope you got something out of this and we'll see you in part two bye for now